So I got invited to uh, talk and answer some questions at a Bible study, a ladies' Bible study here in Walden, uh, just this last week. They just wanted to run some things by you know, a pastor and get an opinion. And so one of the things that they asked me was uh, if I had any reassurances about the future. You know, like if there was some sort of wisdom or some sort of uh, just consolation that I could impart about just, you know, what's coming up, the way the world is heading, the upcoming election, just anything like that. And you know, it was kind of um, interesting that they asked me that because it's actually something that I'm going to touch on a little bit this Sunday at Walden Church. You know, I think when we look at the future and we look ahead and we see all these things that are coming at us and we say, wow, the world's changing, it's, it's not like it used to be, and we kind of wish back for the, the good old days and we just say, you know, just, we, and, and, we put, and we throw blame out. You know, we say it's the government's fault or it's the educational system's fault or it's our city's fault or, uh, you know, the media. We have all these things that we'd like to blame. And we get worried. You know, we're worried about the future. We're worried about our children's future. But you know, there really isn't anyone to blame but ourselves. We make the world we live in, and we make the future that our children will inherit. And the reality is, yes, the world is changing, but we're changing it. See, back in the day, like when my grandparents were children, studies say that about 72% of those people, that generation was raised in a Christian home. They were raised by parents of faith. 72%. Now, I'm mid-40s, we'll say, <laughs> and uh, my generation, uh, my generation, we were raised uh, 65%. So 65% of us were raised in a Christian home or raised with parents of faith. Nowadays, so today's generation, the children that are born today, it's, the numbers are dwindling from 50% to 49% to less than half. I know that doesn't sound like a big variable, but it is. More and more, more than ever before, America is not being raised with faith. Studies show less and less uh, people are not as receptive to church. They're not as receptive to going or attending or seeking those things out on their own. Uh, and studies also show that more and more people are secular. They're just more material, more secular. They live more in a secular world than ever before. So on the one hand, yeah, you kind of do get a little bit of a sour feeling about the future, but there's hope. There is, there is hope because there's also studies that talk about how and why churches grow, how these pews get filled up with people and how that happens, not just in your church or my church, but in churches across America. You know the number one way that churches in America grow? Number one way. It's not your amazing band, it's not your awesome pastor, it's not your incredible children's ministry, it's not your campus, it's not how beautiful your bulletins look. It's none of those things. It's none of those things. Studies still say that the number one reason why churches grow is because they're invited by a friend. That means the people that you know, the people that you see in your everyday life, the people that you would say are in your extended family. This would be the lady that cuts your hair or does your nails. This would be the cashier that you always go to or your postman or your UPS delivery guy. All of those people that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, the people that are in your extended family, God has placed them in your life so that you could be an evangelist. What's an evangelist? We used to think that an evangelist was somebody that stood on TV and asked for money. But really an evangelist is a storyteller. You're being invited to tell the story. You're being invited to tell the story of Jesus Christ. You're being invited to tell the story of your own faith. And much of that happens. That beginning of that story will take place when you can reach out to those people that are in your extended family and invite them to church. I know we're worried about being shot down. We're worried about being made fun of. We're worried about this or that, or we are, we're too shy or too embarrassed, or we think I don't know enough to invite someone. Yes, you do. If you love that person, if you want to see that person come to God and you want to see the church in America grow more than ever before, then it all comes down to you. You know, it was Jesus' original plan that he would send out people that would invite others to the faith and that plan is still working. This Sunday at Walden Church, we're going to talk about evangelism and what it takes to grow the church in America. I hope to see you there.